this will be tutorial 4 on our MuleSoft tutorial with AnyPoint Studio. So this tutorial will be building a MuleSoft application. In fact, this is a beginner MuleSoft application we are going to build. This follows from tutorial 3, where we build an API specification in Design Center of MuleSoft uh, online. So now we are going to actually use AnyPoint Studio. And I actually have opened AnyPoint Studio that I installed in my local system. Uh, we went through installation of AnyPoint Studio in Tutorial 2, so you can review this tutorial. So the first thing we want to do, uh, on the, uh, the, the steps are here, so I'm going to actually minimize this a bit. The first thing is to launch AnyPoint, which I've done, create a new project. So I'm going to just say File and just say New and just choose Mule Projects, alright? So it takes a while to come up, and when it comes up, what we are going to do is to specify the API specification created in Tutorial 3. So in this window, I'm going to just give it a name. I'm going to call it Tutorial 4. And then I'm going to choose Specify API Definition File uh, Location URL. So this will be the Specification we created in Tutorial 3 in AnyPoint Design Center Online. So just choose Design Center and it comes up with this window. I am already logged in, so I'm just going to, I think, since this is a, a trial version, so it recognizes your, your login details. So just click on, this is a, the API specification we created in Tutorial 3. Just select it and click on OK. And just click on Takes a few seconds and click on finish. Yeah, so it's setting up the build part, it will take a few seconds. So let's just wait for a while. So it completes successfully. So if you look at the screen, I'm going to now explain to you a few things. This space here is called the canvas, right? So this space here is called the canvas and this is the mule pilot. Now these items here you can see is called the flows. So what are flows? Flows are simply uh, components in API design that accept message, process it and gives an output. So the next thing we are going to do according to our steps is to configure a listener. So what we are going to do is to click on this listener because we already have an existing listener. So just click on it. So it comes up with these windows. So now you have a connector configuration. So basically we are configuring a listener that will be listening to the HTTP ports and be able to fetch uh, data from the from the design, uh, from the repository where we have our API. So we can just click on, if we click on this plus sign, which is a mistake I make sometimes, we are going to create a duplicate listener and that will give us an error when we are trying to run this application. So just click on this 
at the bottom beside the, the plus sign. And here you can see the name, you can see the protocol is HTTP, so don't use HTTPS for now, use HTTP, allow all interfaces and use port 8081, and then click on, if you click on test connection it's fine, but it will take a lot of time, so just uh, click on it if you want, but I'm not going to click on it for now so that it will not, we can save the time, so I'm just going to click on OK. Alright, so at this point we've configured our listener and then the next step is to delete redundant listener. So this step I'm going to skip it. So skip, skip, so this one done. And this one done as well. So. Alright, so the next thing is to configure my SQL connector. So let's come down here. So what we are going to do is to configure my SQL connector because our data will actually be coming from SQL uh, connection. So um, we'll end up actually deleting one redundant list now, but let's continue. So what we are going to do is to, let's see, Configure MySQL database connection. Okay, so we are going to click on add models and I'm going to click on database databases and place it in, in this place. And then I'm going to actually because here you can see get product, product ID, mail sub tutorial tree. So this is the flow we are actually working on. So this get request is getting product from the API specification we created. So I'm going to drag this database and place it right here. Okay, so no, it didn't it didn't drag. So I'm going to drag. Okay, sorry. So I'm going to actually drag a select statement. Yeah. Drag a select statement and place it right here. Hmm. So this is exactly what you want. And the next thing we are going to do, let me check, is to add MySQL uh, dependency to pom.xml. So the XML dependency, I'm going to actually copy it um, and paste it in pom.xml. So because you can actually get it from the repository. So let's open pom.xml, so this pom.xml, this file, and I'm going to go to the dependency section, you can see dependency section, and I'm going to paste the dependency there. So, it says group ID MySQL, artifact ID MySQL connector Java version 8 and Java. So you can see that it's actually resolving metadata, you can see right here resolving metadata and it's actually going to download um, all the binaries that is needed to to have mysql uh, uh, functionality in for this application so give a couple of seconds
All right, maybe we'll just continue. So let's see what next we are going to do. Uh, the next thing is to add MySQL dependency, configure MySQL database connector. Okay, add database connection to the project. Okay, I think we've actually mixed this up. So let's see. Um, let's see, add uh, configure database connector. We've not done it, but add MySQL dependency to pom.xml. We've done this. Add database connection to the project. We've done this as well. All right. So the next thing we are going to now do is to configure MySQL database connector. So let's come back here. I'm going to close the form.xml and now I'm going to click on this database and I'll be able to configure the connector. So now what I'm going to do is to come here and click on this plus sign here. So click on this plus sign and now it opens up this window. So I'm going to choose my SQL connection now, since we added the dependency in pom.xml, we have MySQL JDBC driver is already there. All right, now about the host, the port, and the user and passwords. Uh, since this is a test application we are building, we are going to use the host name. I'm going to call it product config. Uh, the port is going to be 8081, 8, 8081, and the user is going to be mule and password is going to be mule socks as well. And the database, I also provide um, a test database connection to a test database. So now everything is specified. If you look at the description box, you can see it's specified. And also in Millsoft uh, developer.millsoft.com website, you also see this information. I could actually click on test connection, but I'm not going to do that because it will take uh, quite some, a few minutes. So let's just click on OK to complete this configuration. So at this point, we've added, uh, we've configured database connector so i'm going to click on done the next thing is configure parameters and select configure input parameters and select query all right so if we click on the database select so it will require input parameter as you can see um let's say input parameter right here so shift this a bit upward so you can see input parameters right here so the input parameter is going to be the id and this id is going to be coming from the url uh it's going, it's going to be a url parameter so basically you have id is a key value um, attribute key value pair as a json so this id is a parameter and it's coming from a url parameter called product ID, all right? So now we are going to write, uh, specify the select statement. Now, for now, I want you to just be able to copy and paste. Uh, for now, let's not worry about this for now, as we find a way to do it without having to write all this code after, so after now. So there is a select query that performs the select and selects based on the particular ID that is provided as an input parameter. All right. So the next thing we are going to do, let me just specify this as done, is to transform the data using data we. So what we mean by this is, what is happening? Okay, what we mean by this is when data comes back from uh, from HTTP, uh, it has to be transformed uh, in a message format, and that will be done using a transform message engine uh, called DataWeave. So DataWeave is um, a connector, and it can be um, it's used to manage data transformation. So to do that, I'll simply copy the code and paste. Let me get the code from where it is. So if you also look at the description box below, you'll find this code. All right, so where do we 
paste this. So if you click on transform message, which is the last item on the flow, you can see that it has output. So this output, we are going to paste a data width code that is going to actually perform the transformation. I also want you not to worry about this for now. So I want to make sure you follow the procedure right from beginning to end. All right, so at this point, let's see where we are in the stream. I'll transform the data using data wing. Now it's time for us to test, actually test the application. So I'm going to first, I'm going to save everything and I'm going to then to test this application. Let's see. All right, that's where we are. So I'm going to right click. Yeah, and just say run project tutorial for. So if everything goes well, it's going to display a message that says application deployed and also domain uh, status of the status is deployed, All right? So it takes a couple of seconds. Everything goes fine. We we'll have done everything successfully and let's see. However, if not, it's still okay. We use our debugging skills and then do some debugging. But, but for now, I hope everything goes perfectly well. All right, go, 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 go. Alright, so everything went perfectly well. So you can see domain status deployed, application domain status deployed. So this is the end of tutorial 4. So what actually did we do? What was happening? What did we what was deployed? Deployed to where? And where is the data? How do we make REST API calls using this application? So there are a whole lot of questions to ask and to answer, but for now I'm going to stop here and then we are going to answer all these questions in the next lesson. I'd like to thank you for viewing. Remember, subscribe to my channel and also like this video if it has been informative for you.